did you know that over half a million deaths worldwide are attributable to substance use? And did you know that over 35 million people still globally are struggling with substance use disorders? We want to advance this conversation because it's an essential part of our community and so many people are struggling with substance use. And so today, remember, we've been advancing these conversations around um, substance uh, use disorders. And this, again, a part of that kind of conversation. And I'm joining by a friend, a friend of Convo. See, it's not her first time to be here. I'd love her to help us advance a conversation about family and substance use disorders. So I would love to ask her to just say hi to you and maybe introduce herself as we progress. Okay, thank you, James. Good afternoon, viewers, wherever you are. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you once again for Convoy to give me this chance yes. to come and chat the way forward on how we can help those people uh, living with the drug and substance use disorders and I'm so happy to be here this afternoon and I hope mm. we shall be together viewers tune with us I'm a counseling psychologist and once again the name is still the same Elizabeth wow. thank you so much wow. thank you so much Elizabeth mm. for finding time to come to mm. our convo mm. you know you are a very resourceful person to thank us you. And thank value. you so when we see you coming to mm. us we really appreciate that thank you so much and uh, just to kick start with our conversation about yes. substance uh, use disorders uh, I don't know if you could maybe help us understand or maybe you know expose to us why do we have an increase or a surge in substance uh, use currently? Okay, thank you once again, viewers. Uh, currently, there is increase in drug and substance use. Yes. And this is actually attributed by very many factors. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, we have the family yes. setups. Mm -hmm. So many people are into drugs because mm -hmm of the poor role models mm -hmm. in our families we yes. find that uh, some of the parents are not very careful yes. about what they are doing yes their children are watching yes they are looking at them they are trying to see what their parents are doing yes and in so doing when these parents see what the uh, children see what their parents are doing mm -hmm. they are likely to do the same we normally say uh, monkey sees monkey do Yes, so if sure. parents are in bad behavior, yes. the children are likely to copy exactly mm -hmm. what their parents are doing. Mm -hmm. We have uh, somebody who has said it's called social learning theory. Yes. They say people do things through learning. And mm -hmm. when you learn something, you are likely to do it because we normally do things through observation. observation. So I can yeah. say mm -hmm. uh, the family, particularly the nuclear family, can contribute to the challenge mm -hmm. of drug and substance use mm -hmm. we are experiencing recently. Mm -hmm. Secondly, mm -hmm. there is what we call the environment. Yes. You know, yes. we live in different environments. Mm. Some environments are very hostile. Yes. Some environments are not very conducive. Some environments are so bad that mm -hmm. everything is exposed there. Mm -hmm. I want to give a case example. Yes. We have like a small rural areas. Mm -hmm. You find were 100 meters above, 100 mm -hmm. meters above. Mm -hmm. And these are, there are so many children living in such congested yes, areas. Yes. What is it, uh, what is likely to happen? The children are likely to do exactly mm -hmm. what they are seeing yes, there same, because yes. the influence is so high. Mm -hmm. So the environment is mm -hmm. also playing a very vital role yes. in as far as the substance, the substance use is concerned mm -hmm. and therefore the disorder perpetrates. Okay. Yes. Wow. So mm. you know you've said something that is very critical mm. on observation at yes. the family level. Yeah. Like monkey say, monkey, monkey do. too. Mm. So I want to say, just to bring back <laughs> again and ask you, my, uh, ask you, when you talk about uh, young people and all, you know, the age, different ages and all that stuff, who is actually at a uh, risk, most, uh, most risk mm. in terms of uh, substance uh, use? 
Okay, once again, viewers, we find that uh, drug and substance use, mm -hmm. stroke disorders, yes. they affect people differently. Yes, yes. I would first say, yes. uh, people who experience that mm -hmm. are actually those people who have undergone physical, mm -hmm. emotional, mm -hmm. and uh, sexual abuse, which is also called trauma when they are young. Yeah. So those people are very vulnerable. This is because mm -hmm. when you get trauma, trauma is sort of a fear, and you yes. develop a vacuum because of the abuse that you received mm -hmm. when you are very young. Mm -hmm. So those people are at very high risk mm -hmm. as compared mm -hmm. to people who never experienced such kind of a thing. Yes. You can imagine mm -hmm. as somebody who was emotionally abused, yes. always been thrown very bad words, vulgar words, mm -hmm. very serious words. That mm -hmm. person uh, grows up with a very low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when they grow old, they are likely to fill that vacuum with yes. nothing else mm -hmm. but drug and substance use. Mm -hmm. People who are sexually abused, mm -hmm. they also hate themselves. They have something we call self-pity. Mm -hmm. So for them to run away from that heart, from the guilt, Mm -hmm. from the anger, yes. from the hopelessness, mm -hmm. they turn to drugs mm -hmm. because of that particular thing. Mm -hmm. The ages, because you asked about the ages, yes. mostly it's between 18 to 24 years. Mm -hmm. They are very vulnerable. Yes. And according to Alcohol Institute mm -hmm. of uh, Drug and Substance Use, mm -hmm. they have said mm -hmm. also peer pressure peer pressure mm -hmm. does a lot okay. of damage mm -hmm. and also people you live with you know you are your company yes sure i would want sure. to say mm. i would rather mm. as a youth because they are listening mm -hmm. have one friend with million ideas other than have many friends with one idea wow i would rather have one friend with million, million i ideas. hope they are yes. listening mm -hmm. one friend million ideas other than many friends with with one, uh, idea. with one idea that's huge yeah so yes. the people you are moving with today mm -hmm. they are going to tell us a lot mm -hmm. about the behavior you are going to portray wow yes. wow so yes. I, I, I think i'm getting a lot eh? and i would want to take you back to the family level yeah and ask uh, ourselves is this something that uh, maybe myself as a parent you know, can do, mm. or like you're saying, observation, I mm. imagine, some behavior that I ought to avoid, mm. or some mechanisms that I need to institute in my family mm. to ensure that maybe my children are not prone to substance use, mm. or they are all alleviate a case of someone who maybe who would have maybe gone to substance use. Yes. Yes. As a parent, you have a major role. Mm -hmm. You have a pivotal role yes. in as far as parenting is concerned. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, I would say, mm -hmm. be number one role model. Mm -hmm. Secondly, yes. set clear rules and clear boundaries. Yes. When rules are set, mm -hmm. children are likely to follow. Yes. We normally say, mm -hmm. the way you bring up a child is the way he grows. So when you bring up your children with very defined rules, mm -hmm. they are able to follow. The Bible also says, bring up a child in the way to grow, mm -hmm. and they will never they forget. forget yes. Secondly, mm -hmm. instill the right value systems. In every home, there are yes. values yes. that are supposed to be followed. Yes. And those values, mm -hmm. uh, when they are well set, mm -hmm. the children follow unconditionally. They have no choice. They have to follow mm -hmm. what is in their homes. They yes. know this is bad, yes. so they cannot do it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, mm -hmm. when we have those value systems, mm -hmm. they are enhanced by the pillars. You know, in every family, you have to have a pillar. Yes. For example, mm -hmm. I can say there are three pillars mm -hmm. in a family okay. that makes a family start still. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. One pillar is called structure. structure. You have to structure your home that you want it to be. Structure wow. is like wow. an order, a procedure. There is the way things go. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are not supposed to divert. Yes. And we are not commanding people to do that. Yes. They do it intuitively. Intuitive is something mm -hmm. that comes intrinsic. Yes. 
intrinsic Intrinsic, motivation in a tokadani. So there is something we have set in our family Mm. that has to be followed and they know. Mm -hmm. Another one, Mm -hmm. there is order in our family. The way we do things, we do it in an orderly manner. It's not chaotic. And in so doing, such members know their roles and responsibilities Mm -hmm. such that Mm -hmm. there is no room for vacuum. There is no room for emptiness. There is no room for anything that is bad because Mm -hmm. things are well set. And finally, there is discipline. discipline. Those are the three pillars. Wow. of a therapeutic mm-hmm. family, wow. discipline. Uh-huh. And uh, when there is discipline, mm-hmm. everything is done. So people know I'm supposed to do this. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to do that. Yes. If I do that, yes. uh, our family is not like that. Yes. Yes. Eh? Yes. Then another thing you can do mm-hmm. is educating your educating children. children. Educate them. Mm-hmm. Are enough. Mm-hmm. Educate your child. Yes. Tell them what is Tell them about the dangers of drug and substance abuse. Mm-hmm. Are enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, cigarette is not good. Yes. Bang is not good. Mm-hmm. Give them real cases. Yes. Okay. If anything, mm-hmm. even take them to where people have taken drugs. Mm-hmm. Let them watch pictures of mm-hmm. people who have been uh, in that uh, substance use for mm-hmm. a very long time yes. and show them the consequences wow. of taking such. Wow. So when we educate our children are enough, mm-hmm. education is everything. Wow. Because education brings about sensitization. sensitization you sensitize yes. your child yes. as early wow. as it is. Wow. Because we say the way you bring up a child mm-hmm. is the way he mm-hmm. grows. Wow, yes, and, thank and, you know that, that is a huge Elizabeth. You really, you know, summarize it in very simple. And I wish everybody can get this that you need yeah. to create structures in mm. your family yeah. as a parent. It's yeah. very important. Mm. Then bring order mm. in that family. Mm. And you said something about discipline. Yeah, you know, nowadays this that uh, you know people don't want to care their children. Yeah. That you you care them. That's you're being too, mm. or you know, you're going beyond. Mm. You know, mm. and it, it, so many people have become so. Discipline and mm. parents sometimes lack means or ways how yeah, exactly. to discipline their children. And yeah. maybe I think that's a conversation that we should have. How mm. do you discipline your children? Mm. And to add on what you have said, I've remembered something. Yes. We are bringing up mm-hmm. broiler and helicopter children. Oh, children on. who are just there in the atmosphere. They don't know the real life situations. They live in the air. They are called broilers. You know the broilers grow very fast. Very fast. Not knowing the, the challenges of life. Oh, as opposed to the Kienyeji chicken. Those ones, they, they, they are hardened. I think we should bring up a child mm-hmm. in a hard way. A child is well hardened, well grounded. Yes. So nowadays I see children who are just there up. They are, they are watching things happening. Because the world is not so kind. Exactly. So you need mm-hmm. somebody who is tough to face it. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow, yeah, that yeah. is huge. Yes. Thanks so much for you know keeping us and uh, you know following up on this conversation. Mm. We are talking about uh, family and its place when it comes to alleviating cases of substance use disorder. And so going forward, uh, we want to bring something else, and maybe you can help me a little bit here. Come to identity in mm. your family, mm. and how can parents ensure that uh, this is a hypothetical. I I believe and I feel that. Uh, for the people who have a strong identity, who mm. have identified, who have been able to uh, understand who they are, mm. they have a strong identity, they have a value system, mm. they are able to resist or say no to, to substance mm. use or something or a negative behavior. So maybe you can help me understand how can a parent be on the forefront in terms of uh, you know, ensuring that the children in that particular family mm. understand their identity and they understand their values. Maybe just to... Okay. Yeah. Thank you, James, yes. and also the viewers. Mm. Uh, you have said a very good word, yes. identity. Yes. When we have identity, we mm. have a sense of belonging. Exactly. We have what we call a sense of self. Yes. We know who we are. Mm-hmm. We know our purpose. Yes. And uh, who can make us know our purpose when we are young? Our mm-hmm. parents. Our parents. So, yes. early enough, mm-hmm. the support system support is system. one. Support yes. system mm-hmm. is a child surrounded by love. Is mm-hmm. a child surrounded by encouragement. Yes. And uh, when a child is supported, they grow well. 
they mm. are well grounded. Yes. They are holistic. Mm -hmm. If I, I can say that they are, they grow holistically mm -hmm. because the support system is very strong. Yes. Do they have? Are they mentored well at an early age? Mm -hmm. I want to give an example of uh, some people who did mentorship mm -hmm. and it worked miracles. Yes. Somebody like Alexander the Great mm -hmm. was mentored by Aristotle, yeah. the mm -hmm. Greek philosopher. Yes. At a very high early age. age yes. And finally Alexander at 20 became mm. a king. What made Alexander be very strong? Mm -hmm. It is because mm -hmm. the identity was developed early now. So if parents can take that responsibility mm -hmm. and give their children identity as early as they are, I think we are going to have a yes. very yes. healthy nation, yes. a very healthy mm -hmm. child. Mm -hmm. So parents have a role. Because you, you're able to say no mm, to this. Exactly. Because you believe and mm, you have some values exactly. and some identity. I think that is huge. Mm. That is huge. Now, uh, now, let me bring a situation where now we have uh, cases of substance abuse in our families. H how do we handle that? Do we stigmatize? Do we call them names? How do we handle cases where we have a person in our family who mm. is, you know, uh, mm. using, uh, you know, substances? and we want to be able to help him recover. We, we would love because mm. everybody needs assistance to recover. Mm. So how do we go about those cases where we have them in our families? Okay, first and foremost, these people are sick. Yes. That's what I know. Mm -hmm. When somebody is in drug and substance use, mm -hmm. that's why we are calling it a disorder, yes. because it's not normal. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, mm -hmm. the family should have an awareness. We are dealing with a sick person. Yes. So we give that person what we call unconditional love. Mm -hmm. That person should be loved unconditionally. Yes. Support that person mm -hmm. to the utmost help that person mm -hmm. to deal with the struggles he is going through, mm -hmm. he or she is going through. And yes. in so doing, mm -hmm. when you support that person systematically and consistently, the behavior can change. Okay. Because actually, mm -hmm. the, the, the substance use is a maladaptive behavior, mm -hmm. maybe developed mm -hmm. by some sort of stressors. Oh, okay. You know, what, what we, we, we say, mm -hmm. there is the presenting problem mm -hmm. and there is the underlying problem. Mm -hmm. Could be this person, the problem he is having is emanating from the family. Okay. And he is presenting it mm -hmm. with the, the covering of abusing the drug. So it is good for even that family to establish the root cause of the behavior. Mm -hmm. Maybe the child had been denied love at mm -hmm. another age. Yes. Maybe the child was segregated. Maybe the child was discriminated. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he turned to something else to cover up the hearts, to cover up the injuries. So the parents mm -hmm. should be in a position to do that. Okay. In fact, what we say, mm -hmm. Such people are called identified patients. Wow. They are called okay. identified mm -hmm. patients in mm -hmm. families. Okay. They could be the ones carrying the family burden, and you oh, don't yeah. know. Yeah, sure. And instead of bringing them back emotionally, mm -hmm. you are drawing them, and they are carrying the whole burden. Actually, from research done, mm -hmm. those people carry the family burden, but instead of us supporting them, we have always drawn them. So it's good for a family setup to mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. why is one of our members, and not all, behaving the way they are behaving. It could be something pathological. You know pathological mm -hmm. is a disease. Yes. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a disease in the family, and it is carried by that person. So it is important for them to dig deep and see what can we do differently yes. to help one yes. of our own yes. who is undergoing a very traumatic experience, mm. who is undergoing harm, mm. who is undergoing a lot of struggles. Mm. How can we, instead of thinking on how you can draw that person away? Yes. Wow. So I think, you know, you know you've know, you said something very important. And I think most of the time in our families, mm. last time we, we say that sometimes when you exhibit this behavior, mm. sometimes we judge this person using this behavior. Yeah. And I think at that point we need to separate the person and the behavior. Like so we, we find a way of dealing with this behavior mm. and not really stigmatizing this mm. person, calling mm. this uh, person the names, mm. and actually even labeling the person. Mm. Wow, I think that, that is huge. That is huge. So 
let me take you a little bit forward because we're talking about families. Yes. And uh, talk something about uh, enablers. Yes. I don't know, maybe you could help our viewer to understand uh, what an enabler is mm. in that family context. Okay, from the Raymond's language, yes. the, to enable is to let something happen, mm -hmm. to allow. Eh? Yes. But in a counseling perspective, mm -hmm. it's where you support a problematic behavior. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You're where supporting you a problematic behavior. behavior or a maladaptive behavior. Mm -hmm. You support it mm -hmm. and you allow it to continue or mm -hmm. perpetrate. For example, mm -hmm. uh, an alcoholic can mm -hmm. vomit. Yes. Then you remove the waste. Yes. You are per perpetrating the behavior because it's important you leave it there. When he is sober, let him see the waste. Maybe he will learn from it. Mm -hmm. So when we do things for these people who are using substance, mm -hmm. when we do things for them, which they would have done mm -hmm. if they were sober, yes. we are doing what we call enabling them. Mm -hmm. We are enabling the, beha the, the behavior. behavior. Mm -hmm. And that one has become key. Also, another mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. we can attach to enabling mm -hmm. is whereby we try to hide. We try to hide their behavior. Mm -hmm. For example, a, a, a wife can say, my husband is good, my husband only drinks and does not fight. Yes. No, no. Mm -hmm. You are enabling that mm -hmm. behavior. Mm -hmm. So, it is important mm -hmm. that we don't let the behavior continue. Yes. Because our essence here mm -hmm. is to to make so, the behavior stop. stop yes. If possible, to make it stop. Mm -hmm. But if you continue supporting yes. that problematic mm -hmm. and challenging behavior, mm -hmm. the person continues. And yes. that's why you have seen so many homes, mm -hmm. the alcoholism is becoming a real a issue. Real problem, because yes. the family yes. members yes. are not in yes. a position yes. Yes. To, to, to handle that behavior. Mm -hmm. They are all in it. Yes, yes. yes. Wow. Mm. And, and maybe on the same area of uh, enablers, eh? mm. are there those enablers that we are not conscious of mm. that our behavior mm. propagates a certain without our direct <laughs> yeah. knowledge that yeah. actually what you're doing is actually mm. enabling a certain uh, There is something behavior. we call levels of awareness. Yes. You can have something we call unconscious mm -hmm. Incompetence. You yes. don't know. Mm. You don't know you are yes. enabling the behavior yes. because mm -hmm. most of the times mm -hmm. we have pity on them. Yes. Most of the time we mm -hmm. feel for them. Mm. So when we are doing these things for them, yes. we are doing them because we love them. Mm -hmm. We think we mm -hmm. love them actually. We think we love them. Yeah. And because they are our brothers and sisters. Mm. And in the process of doing that, mm. you enable the behavior yes. unconsciously. Yes. So it is possible. It's possible. You can enable it unconsciously mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you think, how now if uh, we don't support our brother or our sister, mm. who else will? So you do it, not mm. knowing. Not knowing mm. that you're actually enabling, enabling the behavior, the behavior wow. which is quite serious mm -hmm. because the more you do it, the more you make the person uh, suffer. You mm. know they suffer. Eh? Mm. And we normally say, mm. these people are never smart. They can hear, they can listen, challenge them sometimes, yeah, sure. challenge them with mm. love, challenge mm. them, mm. tell them whatever you are doing is making you suffer, whatever yes. you are doing is not making our family progress, whatever you are doing is bringing you back, mm. whatever you are doing is making you jobless, let them understand, challenge them. In a, in a loving manner, yes. they will understand. Some will change. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Mm. So what I didn't tell you is that Elizabeth is a family therapist. I didn't know what, there's no any other better person to have this conversation <laughs> with mm. other than Elizabeth. Now, Elizabeth, the time is nearly spent. Eh? Yes. And uh, first, I would love you to give us a parting shot. But before we get to a parting shot, I will ask you to tell me, do you think healing is possible? for people struggling with substance use? We say mm -hmm. uh, there is the word challenge. Yes. Where there is challenge, there is solution. Where there is challenge, there is a, there a, is solution. a solution. Yes. And that's why we have that word, solution. Mm -hmm. There is a solution to those people who are suffering. One, yes. Yes. one mm -hmm. give them positive stories. Positive, positive stories. stories. Like mm. now, mm. we normally see in the media, yes. people who have recovered from alcoholism, mm. people who have recovered from drug and substance disorder, and they have fully recovered. So when these people see 
positive things. Yes. You give them positive stories. They see them. They experience them. Actually, they will have hope. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a, a solution. A solution. Secondly, mm -hmm. uh, educate them, educate them, tell them mm -hmm. the dangers. Mm -hmm. Whatever you are doing is actually harming you. You can even take a, a picture on them mm -hmm. when they are drunk. Let mm -hmm. them see when they are sober. Uh -huh. I think they, when they see the way they look, I think it can work miracles. Yeah, it can work. Yes. Take them a peek uh -huh. when they are drunk. Yes. Let them, them see, see it when, when they are sober. It's like when you take a picture of somebody when they are annoyed yes. and you show them, they might never be annoyed sure. because of the way they look angry. So I think <laughs> that one can help them a lot, yes. a lot, a lot. Wow. Mm. Wow. And also support and love, uh -huh. like we have said. Mm. And uh, they can also join support groups. There are people who have joined support groups mm -hmm. and it has miraculously worked for them. Yes. They have joined other people who have been there mm -hmm. and they have really gone through the process mm -hmm. of recovery mm -hmm. and they are really okay. okay. The other thing is rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. There is always rehabilitation. They can go for a re in the rehab, they can be treated there and it has worked for very many people I know. Rehabilitation has worked. Mm. People are taken there, they are trained, they are desensitized. Kuna something in counseling we talk of systematic desensitization, mm -hmm. which is done in the rehab. Okay. So you have been in this. Eh? So systematically, mm -hmm. whatever you have gone through is eroded uh -huh. through therapy, uh -huh. continuous therapy. therapy. Okay. You are desensitized on that. Mm -hmm. They also do what we call assertive behavior, mm -hmm. assertive training, assertive mm -hmm. training. Okay. Assertive training is how can you mm -hmm. reduce the level of taking these drugs Drug, yeah. systematically. Mm. So rehabs have worked miracles okay. because they make people recover mm. fully. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Mm. So what Liz is saying is that healing is very possible. Mm. Possible. Wow. So again, just give us a parting shot so that we, we can, I know when we start this conversation, I'm very sure we can learn this <laughs> conversation. And by the way, we're going to have this more of these conversations yes. so that we can uh, sensitize the parents yeah. and families, how they can well be able to yes. take care of the children, how they can be able to prevent some of these cases, especially mm. the mental health issue. Okay. Parting shot as we close. My parting shot is to first and foremost to appreciate yes. this kind of uh, an invitation. Thank you. And secondly, mm. I'd want to tell my viewers, say no to drug and substance use. Sure, sure. It does not add any value mm. in your life. Yes. If anything, it mm. destroys your life. Find your purpose in life. Mm. There is something God made you for. You mm. are created for a purpose. Yes. And I can quote mm. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, mm. for I have got good plans. Oh, yeah. So God yeah. has good plans yeah. for us all. Yeah. Yeah. There is nobody who was doomed to suffer, mm. who was doomed for substance use. Mm. We are all uh, created to prosper. So I would tell those who are in uh, use, yes. who are in that particular disorder, mm. there is hope. Thank you can you. still make it in life. If only you do what we call uh, unconditional acceptance. Mm -hmm. Accept yourself unconditional yes. and find yourself. Mm. Find yourself. There is always room for improvement. And I add by saying mm. there are three C's in life. Yes. Mm -hmm. There is a chance God a chance has given you. And that mm -hmm. chance you have been given, make a change. Make a change. Ch this is the chance. I'm talking today because there is a chance mm -hmm. God is giving you. Mm -hmm. Use that chance well. Change. Mm -hmm. That is the second C. Yes. When you are given a chance, change. And I say it again, it's only a dead person who cannot change because they have no hope. Wow. Yes, Whoever then uh -huh. only a dead person. Yes. But so long as you are alive, Life, you whatever change. situation you are in, you can you change, can change wow. because there is hope. We normally say uh, uh, in Ecclesiastes, mm. it's better a live dog yeah. than a yeah, dead yeah, lion. Sure. Mm -hmm. So you might find like you are a dead dog, but there is still a lot of hope. So you can change. And yes. finally, yes. you have a choice. Mm -hmm. Your life is in your own hearts. Yes. It's like this. Mm -hmm.
And because life is in your own heart, make choices now. And every choice we make has consequences. That's what I can say. So wow. make good choices today. Mm -hmm. yes. Wow, you. wow. Who is the best person to listen to this from, you know, other than experts in this field? So we come to the end of this show today. And I'll, I've led on to what Elizabeth had said, that every human being has a chance, right? You can change. Mm -hmm and you have a choice. Mm -hmm. So do I tell them that the choice is theirs? Yes. The choice is yours. Yeah, it so, is theirs. <laughs> so the choice is yours. Yes. Again, my name is James, and I was hosting uh, this particular show on family and the place of family in uh, substance use and how families can actually be in the forefront in mitigating and actually preventing, and more important, even creating a safe environment for those people who are in, you know, have that particular disorder, how can they recover? Because we would love them to recover. And like Elizabeth has told us, everybody got a purpose. How can they identify their purpose? Because drugs, substances can actually thwart those mm, purposes. It is true. Yes. So uh, I will invite you to watch more of our episodes about the substance abuse uh, all of uh, this month. And uh, kind of get back to us, talk to us, you know, tell your friends about this conversation. Until next time, it's a bye-bye.